we need to talk to him about it. And we, we need to know what God's plans are too. Because as we pray, our plans need to align with God's plan. He, here's what Jesus said. He said, Father, nothing's impossible for you. You can do anything. You can even take this cup from me. You can, you can make it possible that I don't have to go to the cross. But, but it's not my will, my earthly will, Lord. Your will, not mine, but yours. So we need to align our will with God's will. It, it, listen, God wants the best for his children. J- Jesus, his son, he wanted everything good for his son. But, you know, it was God's plan that Jesus go to the cross, that he's crucified on the cross. It's, it's God's will that Jesus die for us, for our salvation, for our forgiveness. Because if he hadn't gone to the cross, if he had not taken the burden of the sins of the world, we wouldn't have salvation. He made salvation possible by going to the cross. Made it possible that we spend eternity with him. Oh, you might say eternity is a long time, a long way away. We just don't know how far away it is, do we? But it's not for our afterlife only. It's for the life that we live here, now, today. For if we don't have Jesus that we can go to and talk to and talk about, confess the things in our lives, and talk about the things that we need in our lives, then how is in the world is he, go- he knows what we need. But he said to us that ask, that we are to ask, and that we are to ask in Jesus' name. And God will do it. So Jesus is our intercessor. He intercedes for us today, right now. Not when we've died and we've gone on to heaven to be there to, through eternity, but for now, right now. So we need to be uh, in communication Uh, with Jesus. We need to align our lives and our will with God's will. So we need to know what God's will is. And sometimes that's really hard to know. You know, as I was reading this scripture, I I wondered, uh, okay, so how did Mark, the writer of this book, know what Jesus said to God? I mean, it was a short prayer. He said, Father, there's nothing impossible for you. So it's possible that you take this cup from me. But if it's your will, not my will, that you do it. Short prayer. So Jesus taught us to pray short prayers, didn't he? Not to pray long prayers to try to impress anybody, but short prayers. He taught us. And Jesus went away. When he came back, the disciples were asleep. So that short prayer took an hour. He said to the disciples, you couldn't even stay awake an hour. So he must have been gone for an hour, wouldn't you say? What do you think he was doing if he prayed that short prayer? Was he listening? Was he waiting? And I think that's what Mark, how Mark knew what Jesus said to God in his prayer. Because he was listening. He was waiting to hear. When I was uh, going through uh, the decision and the process of answering the call to God, I, was, uh, I had already said, uh, okay, God, I'll go where you want me to go and do what you want me to do. Uh, but I didn't hear from God. I had no direction. God did send me to Madison, Indiana, to my, what I call my wilderness uh, period when I was uh, helping a little church, a small church, start a, a, a child care. Uh, and uh, uh, this was a little uh, Pentecostal church, and I knew that I was not supposed to be pastoring or preaching in this type of a setting. Um, my spirit said I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> so I said to God, I, I need direction, Lord. Uh, but they had some good uh, disciplines and principles uh, in this little church. And one, one day a week, uh, 
you were to uh, fast and pray. And, and I decided that I was going to fast and pray on Wednesday. And one Wednesday, uh, during the lunch hour, instead of going to have lunch, I went into the sanctuary and, and knelt at the first pew in this little church. It, and I said to God, you know, God, I've been struggling with, with your will for me. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing or where I'm supposed to be doing it or how I'm supposed to be doing it. But, Lord, I'm not going to move from this place. I'm going to stay right here until I hear from you. And, and I was there on my knees for what seemed to be hours. It may have only been minutes, but it seemed to be hours. It seemed to be hours because my knees were beginning to hurt as I was kneeling on the floor uh, at this pew. And then God uh, decided to spare me, and he said, uh, you're going to preach my word. I said, okay, great. So you told me what I'm going to do. I thought I already knew, but you told me what I'm going to do. Now, where? God was silent. (laughs) I stayed there for a long time, longer, waiting for that answer, too, but God didn't answer. In fact, God didn't answer for nine months. For nine months, I waited for God to tell me where (laughs) I was supposed to be preaching his word. And, and after nine months, God answered. And I knew where I was supposed to be preaching God's word. So God speaks to us. We have to listen. We have to be in a position to hear God as God speaks. I can tell you that I heard an audible voice that said to me, you're going to preach my word. Now, you might think it's weird, and you may have never had that experience. You may never have it, because I haven't had it since. But God speaks, and I think I know that God spoke to Mark to tell Mark what Jesus said in his prayer to give us an example for prayer. So we need to uh, be in a position to hear from God, uh, which means that we have to listen. We have to wait. For God to speak before we move, before we do what we think we want to do, rather than what we know God wants us to do. Jesus knew what God wanted him to do. He asked for something different. But our prayer ought to be, your will, Lord, not mine, but yours. Jesus wanted to be spared the agony of the the cross. And so do we. We want to be spared the troubles of the world. We don't want to go through things. But we have to go through things in our lives in order for God to do his will and to work in our lives. He doesn't always spare us, but he always answers. He always, whenever we go to God for an answer, he always answers. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says wait. <laughs> but he always answers because he hears us when we pray. So I urge you to pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray in the morning. Pray in the evening. Pray. My, my mother taught uh, us to, uh, to pray a, a prayer at night before we went to bed. And uh, we taught our children, and, and our children taught their, grand, their children, our grandchildren. And when our grandchildren uh, come uh, to, to visit or to spend the night, they want to know, are you going to pray with us? Prayer is important, and it's important that we teach our children to pray and that we pray and that we communicate uh, uh, with Jesus. Uh, Prayer is important. So I urge you to pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the evening. Always maintain an open line of communication with the Lord. Always be ready to hear from God. Don't ask God to do something unless you expect God to do it. 
Don't be surprised when God answers because you've asked God in prayer. Just chat with Jesus about everything. Your confessions about your plans, your desires, your need. Just talk to him about everything. Ask Jesus for whatever you need with expectation. Expect to receive it. And pray that your desires are what God desires. What does God want from you? And wait to find out, wait to hear from God. Would you stand? We're going to pray. And I invite you to come if you stand in need of prayer. If you need a touch from God, if you need God to heal you, if you need God to intervene in your life situation, or if you want to pray for someone else, you come. The altars are open for prayer. Would you pray with me? Abba, Father, we join with Jesus and other disciples around the world to pray to you today. Hear our prayers. We pray that you will heal our loved ones. We pray that you will grow the church. We pray that the economy will improve and that people will find jobs and homes. We pray with those who grieve losses. We pray prayers of joy and thanksgiving for our blessings. We ask, Lord, that you mold us, shape us into your image so that what we want is what you want for us. Lord, we pray all of these things with Jesus who prays.